Welcome back to the Tidy Room Hangar. This is Mike, and I'm coming at you with another video. This time I want to talk to you about the 2020 TFCon online third party panel, which was different to say the least, but I kind of enjoyed it. I, I watched the 53 minutes of the presentation, there were some cheesy jokes in there, and it's the cheese flavor that I liked. This presentation did offer some new stuff. And I do want to point out that, yes, I did say we needed these, and we got these. Some of these. We're going to talk about all this, coming up. First off, I want to say that I'm going to go in order of the presentation, but I'm going to leave out all the stuff I've talked about in my news, and in the past that we've covered extensively, just the new stuff. Gonna streamline this hour presentation into 15 minutes, so let's get into this. So first of all, we've got the Make Toys saying that they're gonna come out with their Acid Swarm, which is an Acid Storm, and it's gonna be out in January, I think. This thing's 150 bucks, so their old 115 price structure has changed to the 150 price structure. Hopefully, the Starscream is cheaper than the 150. This is maybe the one-off repaint. Who knows? Yes, we're getting a meteor or starscream repaint or an ex version it's supposed to have extra stuff with it an extra paint and extra special and better re-engineered slightly who knows but it looks good it looks exactly like mine except they did a lot of work with the head the the face on this looks so much better than the face on my original one Here's the release schedule saying that Acid Storm will be out in January, Meteor out in January, Jetstream February, Boost March. Here's the thing. It was kind of a hint that they were going to do a Conehead, then they're going to do Starscream. They were going to do another Conehead, they were going to do Thundercracker, and then Skywarp. Every other uh, release was supposed to be a Conehead, then a reissue. And it looks like they're going to get back to that or back on track with that now almost a year later. They're also making a really stylized version of Shockwave. This doesn't match Bumblebee Movie. This doesn't match G1. This is their own take. Here's the thing. We're starting to see a lot of this uh, silence in third party and popping up with some stylized stuff. I don't know if it's good for the community or not. Here is Shockwave in his gun mode. So it's kind of true to form, but not true to form as G1. So I don't really know where Make Toys is going. I always leaned on Make Toys as giving me something I wanted from G1, and this is kind of disappointing me in a way. Next story, Planet, Planet X is coming out with their version of a Grimlock, which is a bit stylized, but I still think it looks pretty good. It has a style to it. I'm not hating on it. I think it looks pretty good. The thing is, do you really want the Planet X size? Planet X usually makes a bit smaller figures, more of a chug line, not a masterpiece line. Still looks pretty good all around. Next up, we've got Zeta. Zeta Toys is making a Superion. Now, I do say, everybody's saying, oh yeah, they took their Superion and they just made it smaller and made it legend scale. It's 10 inches tall. It's not the same thing. It, it's not exactly the same thing. If you look at it side by side, it's not the same figure. There are so many differences, they're not the same figure. As much as I like the Masterpiece combined mode, I still think the Legends one looks better. The Legends one looks more G1-esque, and I'm on board with it. I hope it's the right price. Zeta's been a price leader, and I hope they maintain that status. Again, True to Form here is one of the bot modes that I think looks really good, and it matches up really well. It's not the same. They have much better bot modes in this upcoming Legends scale than they did with their Masterpiece. And it starts to make me wonder, and we're gonna look through all of these real quick, but it starts to make me wonder, will they make another Masterpiece, like a 2.0? Because Zeta hasn't done a 2.0 yet. Here we are with the alt mode looking good too. This whole set looks outstanding. Here is, of course, their Silverboard looks great. And it doesn't look anything like their first one. Like the Masterpiece one, it doesn't look the same. Like I could do a whole video showing the differences and I might do that if you guys want that. But I mean, I'm looking at them and I'm saying they're not the same figure. The Legends looks better. I'm not gonna drill that point home much more, but it still looks good. It looks really good. Just really good. 
Uh, I'm, I'm starting to wonder, will we even see the end of a fan's toy set? But this Zeta coming out with a really good looking set makes me start to wonder, you know, what's going on. Okay, we're getting into Kidman Grimlock. Now this is sort of like the Flame Toys Kurokari style and it looks good, but it doesn't transform. I understand it's 10 inches tall. It's their Grimlock. Now it is a stylized Grimlock. Again, we're seeing more of this stylized stuff, not stuff matching G1, not matching any media, so they can't get in trouble, right? Here we are, Kidman the Emperor. Emperor is, of course, Megatron or, or Galvatron. Either way, it's still got the, the signature cannon and all that, and it is stylized. I'm not going to talk a whole lot about fans hobby. they got a lot going on. We've seen most of it already. But here is their Athena, the ace hitter of this MB-14. And, uh, yeah, it's reverse on the picture, so I said it reverse. But it it's their headmasters. They look cool. They look good. I know they're doing their wind blade or wheel blade. And it's kind of interesting how they're going. How far, how deep will they go into this headmaster junior scene? And I seem to have missed the whole fans hobby and what this is. When I saw this, I was thinking, oh, oh this is their Defensor, maybe, uh, I don't know. So I'll just go with the I don't know, this is a picture they've got up. Um, it doesn't interest me at all. If it interests you, I'd really like to know more about it in the comments below. Here we are with the Moonstar. Now, this, I believe this 100% to be Zeta. I believe this is Zeta's mold design, and they're just calling it Moon Studio. The thing is that this is the Raiden that they said they were going to make, but then they decided to cancel the project or put it on hold or shelf it so they could go after Unicron and get in a lot of trouble with Hasbro going after Unicron instead of doing this. And and where is their Predaking? And so this, I think, is their outlet to release it. Now, I'm on board with it. I'm on board with Zeta making this, Zeta making a Computron, Zeta making whatever combiner that's G1-esque, I'm on board with it. Even though I'm not really tied to the character, I know Zeta will give us something good, and I'm hoping this really is Zeta, or some form of it, or some offshoot, because it looks great. Hope the build is there. This is what the bots look like, and I'm gonna have to go through this real fast. Train looks like, looks good. Bot looks like, looks good. See. This has a lot of Zeta inspiration, so I really think it's Zeta. I mean, everything about the bot mode, you really can't tell with trains, but the train looks good, too. The bot mode is just crying out, I'm a Zeta figure. So, maybe it is Zeta, maybe Zeta sold the design. Who knows what really happened here. They all look really good. I mean, the bot modes feel Zeta-esque, but I still... I mean, I wasn't hating Zeta's bot modes. This train looks really unique. It's kind of crazy looking. I wasn't hating their bot modes, but they just didn't match G1 100%. They weren't bad. They just weren't 100% G1. And that's why they got so much flack. But here we are with all these. It's a lot. A lot of bots. A lot of trains. Now, Takara is supposed to be making one. I'm hearing the Takara one is going to be more like Combiner War size. Like the 12 or 13 inch, and then this should be 20 inch. That's what I'm hearing. That's what I'm thinking is true. We'll find out more information by the time you actually have to put some money down on it. So we're all wondering if X Transbot still has a pulse because they haven't put anything out in a while. And they stole the show at TFCon, so I'm really thinking uh, I'm excited for Cup, I'm excited for Springer, I'm excited for a lot of things X Transbots. So here we go, getting into this. They showed off more pictures, well, another picture of their Autobot X, uh, a couple of different angles, but it looks good. I have the Blue Lobster one, and I don't know. The Blue Lobster one might actually look better on the shelf than this, but this will have a lot more articulation. Still doesn't transform. I do like it. It's, it's the quintessential, that thing from that episode, as a figure. So, X Transbots is giving us the Death Source, and it looks good. And I'm starting to wonder, size wise, scale wise, how will this compare to my Iron Trans version of Star Saber? Because they go up against each other. I don't know a lot about the lore, but Iron Trans really did a number on that Star Saber. It looks good. 
it looks way better than Takara. And will X Transbots do the same thing with this Deathsaurus? I know that like G1 Deathsaurus and, and Star Sabers are pretty much out of my price range right now for what I'd spend on that, what it matters to me. So, will this be priced right? And will it be built well? Will it look good, painted well? I mean, I have a lot of belief that X Transbots can pull this off, and I'm looking forward to it. Here's the alt mode which i will not display it in the alt mode but you know you gotta have the alt mode and it's gotta transform and it looks all right so if anybody watched my friday video saying my want list what i think we need in a masterpiece line you're gonna see this i really wanted these omnibots made i wanted a punch counter punch and i wanted a few other things but one or two or three of my requests, actually specifically three army bots and uh, a combiner are getting made. So I'm kind of happy. Starting with this army bot, this one is camshaft. Now I do have the G1 version. I have a couple of them actually, and I like it, but this blows it out of the water. This does so much more. This has the opening doors and pop-up lights, which I really like. And it has the transforming feature to more of attack mode. I like. But the bot mode is where I care. This brings me back to the day. The melons. Now, the melons for me personally are a huge thing. I had all these as a kid. And I love it. Now, this one, Overdrive, is my favorite. Truthfully, I didn't really know the names of these as I was growing up. I, I just thought this was actually sideswipe i was a dumb kid and this was my sideswipe i never had a sideswipe as a kid and this was my sideswipe uh my mail-in offer of overdrive took that spot this thing was awesome for like 10 reasons but number one it, it is a ferrari number two it's red number three it transforms into a, a flying car i'm gonna i'm not gonna lie as a kid with a car that had some wings under it, it could fly. I mean, this was cool. I mean, James Bond had nothing on this car. And here we go in the robot mode. Looks amazing. I probably will get two of these. Uh, this is probably the best, if not my favorite, it is my favorite, of these Omnibots that I've wanted. And I put on my want list for like two or three want list videos. Finally getting it. I want to say x Transbots. Didn't show the third Omnibot, but they did throw in this. And during the presentation, they said this is the first of the Protectobots. Like, come on, I would announce this as, Extrasbots is finally doing a Defensor. That's what I would have said. I mean, is that what's going on? But it looks good. It looks good in bot mode. Uh, I'd like to see a full-on Defensor. If you're going to start a Defensor, why are you just throwing, like, hey, hey, let's take a leg or an arm. Let's start with that. Throw us a picture of the whole combined mode. You gotta have some sort of idea where it is. Moving into MC MMC. MMC is doing their own uh, Death Source 2. It looks good. Theirs is a bit more stylized than, say, X Transbots, but it looks good. In fact, when it comes to Death Source and Star Saber, the more stylized and more interesting may be better. I don't know how big this one will be. Will it be able to stack up against the Iron Trans version or the official Takara? And that's a question yet to be decided. But it looks good. I, it looks promising. Next up we have their MMC Mentis or Rung. Uh, this is a character I know nothing about and I have no tie to it. But... I'm hearing from the community that a lot of people wanted it and a lot of people like it. So with that, I'm going to pay a little bit of attention to it and see what's going on with it. But it's probably not something I'll pre-order or even review, but it's cool. I mean, I think it's cool looking. It's got a scooter with it. It's got two, four, six, seven, eight heads. A lot of, a lot of hands. It's kind of crazy. And of course, MMC is going to do a Defensor themselves. It's going to be the full all-in-one. It's going to be just like Bruticus. And this looks even better than Bruticus. I think this looks better, more G1. Like, this is super G1. This is just like 99.9% .9 G1. And I, 
I, I want to decide, do I go with X trans boss? Do I go with this one? Because of the fact this looks so good. The other thing about MMC is the transformations are decent. And I don't feel like I'm going to break it. I don't feel like I'm going to pull my hair out transforming it. I, I, I like MMC and their designs and how they do things. I really like it. And so it's going to be too small. If it's the same size as the Bruticus, it's too small for my collection. But if it looks this good, I might not have to be able to pass. So individually, the bots look good, the all mode looks good, and it looks simplistic. I mean, you can look at this and go, yeah, I can kind of see how that transforms. They all have that look. I resisted Generation Toy because I knew Generation Toy was too small. And this should be bigger than Generation Toy, but not as big as Zeta, DX9, X Transbots, Fans Toys. So it won't be on the same shelf unless you do some cheats with like a couple of like two by fours underneath it to prop it up. But it still looks so good. I mean, it feels like you're buying the G1 toys the way they should have been in the first place. That's really what MMC does when they make their figures. And they blur out this picture because, I don't know, you shouldn't know what it is, I guess. But I'm really excited for it, look forward to it. Uh, I might be in on two sets, since I did three sets with the Minasaur, I could do two sets with this. So anyway, that's pretty much all the new news and the crazy stuff that's going on with Third Party Panel. Let me know what you think about what's going on with Third Party Panel. What did you like? What did you dislike? Like and subscribe to Dear Hanger Out.